down in the description below, I'll make a list of some of the items I think you'll need for your bug out bag in case you need to evacuate that you'll have with you in your car or wherever you may be traveling to. Also, I'll make a list of things that you should keep at your home so that when you return, hopefully they'll be there that'll make your life a lot easier to um, get back to normal once you return. These are my hurricane tips. I'm gonna go through this really fast. If you miss something, please rewatch the video, grab a pen and paper, take some notes, because I'm gonna go over a lot of tips. I've been through a lot of hurricanes, lived through a ton. I don't, I've lost count, I don't even know anymore. So I'm gonna to try to go through this really fast because I don't wanna make this a long video. This is in no way a complete list, but these are just some quick tips to help you. First, I uh, personally, I save these. These are little two liter bottles. And what I do with those is I like to either um, filter, distill, or boil water. And then I may add a few drops of uh, chlorine bleach so that it'll last. And I use non-scented chlorine bleach, um, or as some people say, Clorox bleach. And uh, just make sure it's not a, you know, it has no other ingredient in it, just, just a, just a straight bleach. Um, what I do is I, I like to save these because I personally feel, you know, you know, standards are going to be different for everybody else. This is just my personal opinion. I like to store three to four gallons of water per person per day. Um, the reason you need water is because you can only live about three days without it. You need to be able to hydrate yourself. Your body's mostly made of water. The planet's, you know, three quarters of it's covered in water. Water is an essential thing that you need so I, I recommend if you even if you have to evacuate when you come back home you'll actually have water that, that's palatable that you can actually drink um, or potable water <laughs> so um, let's keep going now second um, I recommend you do these things also prepare before the hurricane usually hurricanes you have a warning depending on where you live. You have a, a, a time window that you know it's coming. Tomorrow, I know we have a potential threat of a hurricane coming. So, today, I, I don't own any stock in this company, but I'm just gonna go over a couple different things. This is my choice of radios. Communications are, are big. If the cell tower should get knocked out, you're gonna need a way to be able to find out what's going on in the world, because your electricity may be out in a hurricane. Seen it, been there, more times than I can count. It's horrible. So with this, you know what's going on. The reason I choose this radio was two, re three reasons really. First, it has a crank on the front. So you don't have to plug it in. You can actually crank it to charge it. Second, it has a solar ability to charge itself. Third, you can put batteries in the back and make this radio work. So you can find out what's going on in the world when you're stuck with no electricity and possibly no cell phone service. Now, with that said, prior to the hurricane, this is this is pre, this is prepping, this is pre-hurricane. Fill your vehicle that you may have to evacuate with full of gas. Why? Because on that last day, people are gonna to try to evacuate. They're gonna be stuck on the highways, in traffic, and then they hit every gas station and they may run dry. You wanna have your vehicle a day or two. I just wouldn't fill mine up just so I'd be prepared in case I needed to leave. Um, don't wait to the last minute. If you see a hurricane four or five coming your way, go somewhere else. Go inland or go to another state depending on the size of the hurricane. You know, if it's 155 mile an hour winds, you should avoid it. You should, you should leave. <laughs> That's my opinion. Some people want to try to live, you know, ride it out, live through it. Um, the water, let's get back to that. It being essential. If you should evacuate and come back, if you have two liters of, of stored water in, in plastic, the reason I use these is because they're food grade and the water will last a long time in those. If you have some stainless steel container that you can store them in, that's great. Use what you have. I'm not saying you have to spend any money. I just recommend these, these small tips. Get gas for your vehicle in case you need to evacuate. Have you a bug out bag ready 
Now I can go over a list of what you should basically put in one. I could I could go grab one of you know from the other room and, and go over my whole details list of everything I have in one. But you're gonna want to have if you you're gonna want to have if you should evacuate and come back. You're gonna want to have food and water and hopefully your shelter, your home is still there after the hurricane. Um, but you're gonna want to take some with you on the road also. Because if you're stuck in a traffic jam for quite some time, you're going to want to have something to eat and something to drink. And uh, so let's go over those tips. Also, um, if you have a propane tank, I recommend getting it filled before you leave. Don't reattach it to the, to the, to the grill leave it outside <laughs> to become a projectile missile. I'm saying fill the tank, leave it off of the, uh, the grill, do not attach it. Put that tank somewhere safe, somewhere that you can you can store it safely, and um, that way, if you do come home and there's no electricity, you have a way to cook. Um, I'm gonna make a list because we're talking about pre-hurricane preparing. We're talking about prepping um, of items that sell out first. Grocery stores, when a hurricane's coming, they basically sell out of these items first, and these are things you can store. Now, I could go into basically. Which canned foods last the longest? I can go into MIs, meals ready to eat, um, different kinds of rations. Um, I may put some links and descriptions down below for you guys, but you want long-term long -term water storage <laughs> so you have something to drink um, and and basically do all your sanitary things with. You could, you could wash your hands, wash your face, you know, take a bath. If you have water stored, if your municipal system should become contaminated during a hurricane, a lot of times it does, you want to be able to have safe water to do these things with. You don't want to be trying to bathe in some contaminated water or trying to, to boil some water that may be contaminated. So with that said, um, I recommend storing water, at least three to four gallons per person per day. Um, in a Katrina situation, you would want to have a lot of water, you know, if you're if you're coming back. You know, a lot of people didn't come back after after that happened. They moved to different states. I try to generally prepare in segments. I started uh, saving these two liter bottles, and I prepared for a week, then two weeks, and then it grew. You know, I prepared for myself to have four gallons of water, um, and everybody else in my household, including my animals. So that they have something to drink. Um, with that said, I would I'd recommend you do the same thing for your family and, and your loved ones and your pets. Let's see what else I can cover really fast in a short amount of time here, because I'm trying to make this video fast. I'm gonna put um, a couple slides in here so that you guys can take notes. 